Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for coming out to the SAG After Foundation special screening. What did you think of Premature? The movie premiered at the Sundance Film Festival about a year ago, but just the other day, its co-writer and director uh, was awarded with the Someone to Watch Award at the Independent Spirit Awards. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage co-screenwriter and director Rashad Ernesto Green. <clears throat> And please welcome to the stage co-screenwriter and star Zora Howard. So, so the real, the beginning goes back a bit. How did you two meet? How long have you two known each other? I've known Zora since she was 11 years old. 11? <laughs> How did you meet? Uh, I was an actor back in the day uh, uh, and had a show in New York at a company called Classical Theater Harlem. Uh, Zora had an uh, education through the... Through Harlem the School of the Arts. Go, go ahead, Harlem go ahead. School of the Arts was... Um, the Classical Theater of Harlem was in residence at the Harlem School of the Arts where I was a student, was a, taking theater classes and the such. Yeah, and after the show, after the show that was cast and she was like hanging the Co costumes after the show and like spraying yeah, them down. I was down doing other stuff as well, like but, that. uh. <laughs> but that's how we originally met. And then and so she was 11 at the time. And then when she was 12, we, we had the cast party at her house. Was very, very involved in that particular theater. Uh, and we also lived on the same physical block um, at that time and, and still do. Um, but um, when she was 12, she invited me to a show that she played that she did in that same theater at uh, Harlem School of the Arts, a uh, uh, poetry show, spoken word. Mm -hmm. And I was just I, I came and supported her, and it was I was just so blown away at the, the 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 subject matter that she was talking about at 12 years old. I was just beginning to think about it in my early 20s, and I was just like, wow, you know, she's just she was so so wise beyond her years, you know, just and really, really, yeah, really blew me away. Um, after that experience, I went back to film school to start making films. And in my second year, I wrote a film about a young girl who gets pregnant in the Bronx. Uh, it was the short version of Premature. And when I was thinking about who who could I cast that who, who hasn't lived this experience, but, but could portray this on screen, I thought about my wise young friend, Zora Howard, and uh, cast her in the role, and she was absolutely brilliant in this film. Uh, hopefully it'll be like on the... <laughs> hopefully it'll be on a DVD or Blu-ray if that's, you know, released, and, um, you know, people can get a, get a chance to see her at 14 years old, uh, just, yeah. Well, I, I want to ask Zora, like, you're, you're talking about this role, about what's going on with this character, and you're 14. And like, what, was, what do you remember about that conversation, and what do you remember about, about your thoughts about, about playing this character at 14? Yeah, so <laughs> I, I was, um, it was my first year in high school, I believe. I went to LaGuardia High School in New York City, where I'm from, um, and I got to, yes, yes, LaGuardia, yes, Fang, ow, yes. <laughs> Um, and I got, um, I was able to leave classes. I had to leave classes for a little while to be able to shoot the film. Um, but I, you know, I was like, listen, I can do this. I'm ready for this. You know, I know Rashad, I'm up for it. And it wasn't until the, um, the scene where in Premature, the short, the character's name was Tisha, Tisha. Tisha. And um, <laughs> where she was about to give birth and it hit me right then while I was on set and I was like, I'm 14 don't know how to do this. I have not done this yet in my life. So I called my mama um, and I, I, we were shooting in an apartment in Newark and I like asked everybody, like I went to the bedroom, closed the door and I just was like, mama, we about to do this scene. And she, <laughs> I don't know how a, a, a mother speaks to her 14 year old daughter and tries to walk her through what it might be like to give birth so that she can then process it and figure out how to do it on screen. But whatever my mama said helped um, and I just kind of took that um, 
and it was a very intimate scene. You know, it was right there in the bathroom. Rashad was there. Our DP was there. Um, and I just remember, I don't know if you remember this, afterwards, I was so charged. Or I had a lot of feelings. And you tried to come touch mm. me or talk to me or something, and I kind of mm. fiercely responded to you. That's been a lot of our experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's what I remember about that, you know. I just, I guess, when in reading the script and, you know, working with Rashad, we had rehearsal time for that project as well. And even doing it in the rehearsal room, I had never really thought through what it would be like on the day to have to pull that. And I really, you know, sometimes, you know, as a performer, you're just a vessel and there's something else that is, is working through. Um, and I think I was very lucky to have that something else that day, uh, in part with the help of my mother. Yeah. In, in the short film, she brings the baby to term. Yeah. Um, it's not like, you know, right. she's aborting. Um, and so in that bathtub scene, she's actually giving birth. Mm -hmm. And wow. to see her, I mean, you think that this young woman is giving birth in the bathtub. I mean, she's just like, she's that that phenomenal in that scene. Uh, like, matter of fact, when, when it was only like two or three takes, so maybe two takes, yeah, you know, because it was just really intense. Little, little um, sure. <laughs> but when we, when we finished it, the DP and I went outside, he had a smoke, and we looked at each other and we were like, we have a film. You know, it was just like, as a result of that, you know, that performance. Well, what was behind the idea to expand on it, to turn it into a feature? And how long ago did you first have a conversation to, to expand? Yeah, I think we, um, so from that point, you know, we, we've been friends for, from that point forward. Um, and, and Rashad has very much been involved in my life, just as a friend, a supporter. We've gone on and done our own individuals and in, in separate projects, and we've been present for each other in, in those um, processes, but we hadn't really worked together in a substantial way mm -hmm. since the short. But we've been talking about it for years and years and years, because Rashad, again, first knew me as a writer, really, a writer and a performer, but you came to see the poetry show, and that was my writing. Um, so we've been talking about writing something, talking about writing something. Uh, and funnily enough, uh, about three years ago, when I was in grad school, Rashad was like, now's the time. It's perfect timing. And I, was, I disagreed, because I was in the middle of training, uh, but um, was excited about it and felt very inspired. It just felt like the moment, I guess. And um, so when I was on break from grad school, we had a month, and we kind of yeah, we said we wanted to get something down by the end of that month. Yeah. So how many days did you shoot this movie? Uh, we shot over 18 or 19 days. Wow. Yeah, wow. 18 or 19 days. But yeah, just to piggyback on what, what Zora was saying, uh, that month that we had off, we, we got into the room and we didn't know that premature was, right. that we were gonna expand premature. We, we got into the room and we said, let's just put something down on paper. We want, we want to make a film. And we asked ourselves what we felt was missing in present day black cinema. And we said, we, we, felt, we both felt that there was an overabundance of films that had to do with pain and suffering and victimization and fear. And we were like, all right, well, what, we want to do something else. We want to um, offer something to the other side of that equation, although we understood why those films uh, are made, we're just like, there's a lot of them. You know, when's the last time we saw like a, uh, like a love story, yep. you know, especially in a, in, a, in a young love story at that. So we wanted to capture Harlem before it changed completely uh, through the eyes of a young woman because we knew Zora would be playing the lead and we both could call from our life experiences as far as love was concerned, our heartbreaks and various relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And so we started writing a love story. Mm -hmm. And while we were writing that premature, the short film setting, themes, characters began to invade that process. And we, we embraced those as well. Sure, yeah, you, you leaned into it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the, the thing about, that I loved about, about the film is it, it, it feels very lived in. Uh, it feels very intimate and uh, un unflinching you know i mean especially when the 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 child is aborted and uh but it, it does feel very intimate and genuine and how how did you uh 
uh, come to cast uh, Joshua Boone. He's just terrific, and I think the chemistry really does obviously play a very big part in that. Yeah. Yay, Josh! We had a reading in New York mm -hmm. of the script. Um, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll uh, just to hear the words aloud, see where the script is, and get some feedback. And we needed to cast all the characters, and we just basically threw out you know, our wires and said, you know, well, this is the type of guy that we're looking for. We didn't, uh, neither one of us had um, someone, in, someone mind. in mind, like right off the bat. Sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, through our various resources, I think Zora, mm -hmm. you know, somebody suggested, hey, have you, do you know this guy? And we were both like, no. Um, <laughs> but, but he came in, you know, he was a handsome fellow and hadn't fully Finished the Didn't script. Finish the script. Didn't get to the you know real important stuff in the script before we read the script aloud. But his take on the material was so uh, was so right, like spot on, mm -hmm. you know that when I heard him you know, uh, say Isaiah's words, I kind of fell in love with Isaiah as as he was portraying him. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, chemistry is also very important. And if you don't have if you don't have it, you can't fake it. And if you do have it, it's gold and it's magic. So when did you feel like you had that gold and magic? During the reading, uh -huh. um, we were sitting side by side. And again, you know, he, he admitted to both of us, he's like, listen, because we did get them like the day before. And we tried to schedule a little bit of time right before the reading to maybe kind of just walk through so he wasn't surprised in the middle of the, um, the reading with what went down. Um, and just sitting there next to him and, you know, we were looking at each other and we were working through it. And that plus the energy of all the other um, cast members that were uh, participating in the reading that day, it was just, it was electric. Um, and, you know, we didn't immediately say, we didn't know that we were going to have a movie produced right at that moment. So we didn't, of course, say to him, yeah, you got the role. We didn't know. Sure. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we went forward and we had also a traditional casting process. Um, but the two of us, we just couldn't. You know, we just kept on coming back around to Josh, and he came into the room too, and he did his thing. And there were a lot of other great people who came into the room, but there was something. Yeah, I don't know how you. Sometimes the the casting gods just. And he was a, he was a little older than you know than we wrote the role, um, so. I wasn't. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> so. Um, but, you know, but because he had such a great take on it, you know, I, I, I had his folks, you know, to, to his agents or whatever, you know, make sure that he came in looking young, you know, clean shaven or whatever, you know, to just, just try to look as young as you can to, you know, to, to match Zora's youth. And, um, yeah, it, it, it worked out. I think that because you, uh, like you did have a very short uh, shooting schedule. Did you have enough time to sort of rehearse and prep? No. You're shaking your head. No. No. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, just like uh, it was unfortunate because obviously for the short film, we were just we had lots of time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I in an ideal world, that's exactly what I wanted. But, you know, when it comes to SAG and how much you have to pay to act for rehearsal, and we didn't have, you know, we had no money, you know, just none. Um, but we did have at least one. We had one reading mm -hmm. for, with the cast. And we had one rehearsal day plan. Uh, but come the morning of that rehearsal day, which was the, the, day, the day prior to, to shooting, uh, the first day prior to shooting, and I, 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 I was like, oh, there's a Caribbean Day parade today. You know, so I was like, man, that might be really great production value. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we we you know we just and we were but we we're shooting on film so you know to get the camera truck out to Brooklyn to get the crew to you know I mean to, to load the camera by the time so I'm making phone calls hey all right let, let, you know let's let's try let's try to do it Zora are you available Josh are you available and yeah everybody was game and and, and just started running and, and got them in costume and we ran out to brooklyn and it was like the tail end of the parade by the time we got out there and the sun was going down and you know they threw the camera on, on laura's back and we were just like running you know just running through the caribbean day parade <laughs> and and we were like just okay go out there be in love 
<laughs> sure. Kiss. Kiss. Yeah. So their first rehearsal, like just even getting to know each other, they were already kissing and dancing and stuff in the Caribbean Day Parade. Well, to that I say great job because it looked amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so, some, sometimes during these uh, SAG uh, After Foundation Q and A's, the uh, you know a lot of independent films come through here, and the filmmakers will say they don't have time to rehearse. But the the they also say that that lack of rehearsal gives the performers just they're they're finding their way. That's it's just more nat it's more genuine, it's more authentic when they don't when you don't have that much time to rehearse. Is that something you can relate to? I mean, you know, there's so much of the film that I just don't imagine how we would have rehearsed. And I mean, what Ayana was experiencing, you know, that first time, sure. Zora was also, I was also <laughs> experiencing in a lot of those um, okay. scenes. And I think that, add, that, added a diff that added a layer, you know, it really was some of the, you know, the first time Ayana and Isaiah touched, the first time Josh and I touched, the first time we, you know, argued, we were figuring out and that was the first time that that was happening for Ayana and Isaiah. So in a way, that's a very special, unique, probably doesn't happen often uh, kind of <laughs> experience as an actor. Uh, but I think for this particular project and this particular story, it actually really worked for us. You know, the, the, the scene obviously in the, in the bathroom is really, really powerful. How do you, how do you prepare for a scene like that? Um, I think so much of that is having trust for the people that you're working with, uh, yeah, for the people that you're working with. Um, I really had to trust my director. Of course. Um, I really had to trust our DP, Laura Valadao, who was, she was the one there with me. You know, there was such a small, small, these are real New York City apartments that we're shooting in. Um, so Rashad couldn't even be in the room. We had to close the door. It was like, the bathroom was like this big. Um, and yes, it was a closed set, but there are the people that, who were present knew what that scene was going to take. Mm -hmm. Um, and they gave me what I needed. You know, you don't, that's a real blessing. You don't always get that as a performer. Um, I, and I asked for things. I needed to be alone. I needed to um, have until the very last, you know, okay, now Zora, we need you on set. But before that, that people were away from me so I could get where I needed to get. Um, and it was very difficult. Um, and yes, we were shooting on film. Uh, and no, we didn't get in one take. Um, and that's work, but you know, if you don't trust the person that's behind the lens calling the shots, then you, then that, you know, you start to get frustrated, you know, or resentful that you have to keep on going through it. But I trusted Rashad that he wouldn't have us do it again when he got what he needed, you know, and that um, trust is very important because, and then I saw it, you know, and then I saw the rough cut and I was like, all right, brother. What's it like for you uh, to see a, a rough cut? Because sometimes actors do not like to wash themselves at all. <laughs> I saw a few, I, I, and I really am appreciative for that. You know, I um, got even to be in the editing room and see that work happening. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and it's just, you know, what is the thing that you filmmakers say? How many times you make a film? You write it, and then you shoot it, and then you edit it, and something else? Yeah, yeah, three times. Okay, you three times three you times. make a film. <laughs> um, it definitely wasn't the film that I thought that I wrote, but um, all of the, everyone that was involved um, that adds to the storytelling, I mean, now I, there's no, I can't imagine the film any other way. You know, there were things that ended up in the final cut that were not in the script, you know, that we worked in in post um, that really, yeah, you want to talk about yeah. the poems? Yeah, basically we did not write poetry into the, to the film. When did you introduce that into the narrative? Yeah, so so we we wanted Ayana to be a writer, you know, to 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 be a poet, <clears throat> um, but we just wanted to allude to it. Uh, so, you know, when when he discovers her writing in the in the journal, and she starts to go into that poem at the end of that scene, we cut that scene before we hear any poetry. But on the day that we shot it. You know, I said, you know, I might just need, you know, for cutting purposes, can I just have a couple of lines or, a, or just a something? It doesn't matter, just just any poem. And she went into her memory banks poem that she had written some years prior. Um, but this is also a bastardized version of that poem because it wasn't like 
she was prepared. But she just said what she remembered, and she was like, Rashad, you're not going to you're not going to use this, right? I was like, Don't worry, but you know, just 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 finish it, you know, just just finish the poem. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And so trust. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, when I saw the first rough cut that my editor put together, uh, he had, like, the, the montage built over when she's uh, getting the sonogram, and, and he used that poem over that section, and it just, it really worked. And so, but it kind of stood alone as the only poem that was there. And we also had an issue because Ayana doesn't speak a lot, you know, when she's uh, on the date with Isaiah, she's doing a lot of listening, and uh, you can tell what she's feeling by, you know, how she responds to him and, and, and the look in her eyes, but we don't necessarily have too much access to what she's thinking. Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, well, maybe we can add a little more poetry here and there. Um, and, you know, I called Zora and was like, can you give me some more? And she was just like, well, what, well, you know, where in the film and, you know, what's happening and what's she thinking? I was like, well, can you just say something about yearning and she's on the subway and she's looking at the place? And she was like, okay. And, um, you know, and then like a day would go by and she, you know, gave me, give me four lines or five lines of poetry uh, via, you know, the, the, the I message voice on memo. Vo voice memo or whatever. And, um, and then we just plugged that into the film, and that's what made, made it into the film. Yeah. That is independent filmmaking in the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, like, what were the ways in making a film in this, you know, independent, like, real guerrilla, almost gor like guerrilla style, to do it in 18, 19 days? Like, what were the biggest things you learned as a director, and what are the biggest things you learned as an actor? You go first. <laughs> I mean, we shot in my apartment. You know, those were my records from my father. Um, you know, uh, we had the, the first date we had written uh, to end up in Coney Island. Uh, but because of budgetary constraints and location issues, we had to just move on the, f like on the fly, yeah. we had to make decisions that would impact the film greatly. And so those were one of those this decisions that we were like, okay, look, Coney Island's not gonna happen. Um, you know, and we're shooting the scene in like two days. Um, we'll just do it at the park around the corner. It'll be at the river instead of uh, at, at the beach. And instead of uh, a fish fry restaurant, they'll just be you know, eating hot dogs on, you know, on the bench. Like, that's it. Like, it's like, <laughs> it's like you, just get, you just have to roll with it, yeah, you know? Like, yeah, and, you know, and there were producers that were like, look, we're not, we're not ready. Like, let's, you know, let's stop. Like, let's regroup. And we were like, we don't have time to regroup. Like, you know, we have the crew now. The cast is here. Like, we have to just go, you know, and just roll with it, you know? And there that, that was, that was a scene that wound up on the, the subway platform that we were... It's gonna shoot outside, but then we were like, okay, well, we need to like light exterior night, and we just were running out of time. All right, let's just throw it in the subway, like it's like you know, and like we just <laughs> so we just did, it, and you know, and then it came out okay. Like you just, you just so long, so long as this, so long as you keep your your you know what you're trying to get across and your story intact and what's happening to the characters, you can be a little flexible with the scenes and where they take place and stuff like that. You know, when, when you talk about that, that behind the scene sort of, uh, you know, mayhem, I think, you know, you watch the film, you know, it feels like, wow, this is like such an assured, confident vision and a, a strong voice, <laughs> boy. And then you hear a story like that, you're like, wow, that, you know, kudos, man, because that's, uh, to, to, to have it end up looking so polished like that. But but as an actor, like for you, like what was how did that process challenge you and help you become a better actor? Oh, well, because I've never I never during premature felt like just an actor, um, because I was also obviously very invested in the storytelling. So when those decision when that decision making was happening, or when we were sidebarring, or it was after uh, a day on set, and then it was like about that scene uh, that we wrote, um, I, I think. 
because I also play the role of an actor on this project, um, that when it came time to close certain things out, that I really had to protect and preserve that time because I owed it to my director and I certainly owed it to my castmates to fully show up as an actor and fully give myself over to Ayana. Um, so as much as I felt myself pulled, you know, there was a certain hour or you know, top of day on set where it's like, hello, I'm you know sitting in hair and makeup and I'm getting prepared for Ayana. Um, and then we can have those conversations once the day is, you know, once we wrap for the day. Um, and, and, uh, and also being vocal, you know, about when I felt those different roles bleeding unto one another, to be vocal and say, hey, you know, I need to step away, or um, you let me know how it goes. <laughs> um, and that goes back to that trust, wow. you know? You can't do that uh, with every team and on every project. So, so based on your experiences making making a, an independent film like this, like uh, if someone said to you, "I want to make an independent movie," like what was the what would be like the thing you would tell them, like a advice, like like what would you say? Okay, here's what you need to do. Here's what you you know do not do at all. You know what I mean? Like what the would you impart from the wisdom of making an independent film? You need to write it. <laughs> oh yeah, that helps. You need to write it down uh -huh. first. I think you know um, you can have a, a great ideas, um, but once there's something hard and physical in your hand, it's of course an entry. You know, you can get that help you get into a room and speak to the right person. But it's also for you to know that you've already done so much of it to have written it, and then you know you have a vehicle. You know, you have something that can ride you out there, um, and then I guess what what not to do or what to expect and to not necessarily acknowledge is that there'll be a lot of people telling you how things are not done, how things do not go. Um, and then you'll I, go through the entire process and I think everything with Premature has been, it has not gone the way it was supposed to go. Yeah. You know, so to hear people at the top of the process be like, and this is the way things go, this is filmmaking, this is how it happened. And me, again, this is my first screenplay, this is my first time leading you know, um, a project. Uh, as an actor, I was leaning into all of that. I was sure, like, yeah. oh yeah, this is how things go. I'm <laughs> good at school, I'm gonna get it right, I'm gonna do it how things go. Um, and then everything was flipped on its head. Um, but to embrace that, you know, and then like Rashad was speaking about, and then you have these, you know, it, it goes the way that you didn't plan for it to go, and then it, it turns out being something that you could have never imagined it would be. Um, to embrace that, yeah. you know, the the advice. It's hard because you know I, I took a I took a risk on this project. I uh, after Gun Hill Road was my first feature, opened up the door to some t to, to TV, um, and I I worked in TV for about five to six years, but I didn't feel like my soul was being fed in the same ways when, you know, when your name is on a project. And um, so we wrote this film in such a way that I knew that I could green light it myself should push come to shove. And I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone <laughs> because what you feel like you're, you know, comfortable putting in or, it's always gonna grow from there. Um, and I was sweating a lot during this process. But of course, I wouldn't be here had I not done it. So even though I would recommend you probably find the money from somewhere else, if you have a little bit of change and you're able to take a risk on yourself, then... <sighs> then you could do it, but <laughs> <laughs> but man, you know, make sure it's okay. And like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? In the end of the day. Your, your performance, uh, if you said this is your first lead, I, I mean, you're amazing in this film. I mean, really, really superb. Uh, what was it really, I mean, the simplest question, what was it like for you to carry this film as a lead? Um, you know, being on, so Rashad and I wrote this together, and then once we got to set, we kind of had different experiences, yeah, you know. Yeah. He was doing something different, and I was doing something different um, after spending so much time in the room together developing the piece. Uh, and 
my experience on set was that I was with actors all day long, and a lot of other people, of course, but I was really with my castmates, and shout out to our incredible cast who carried the film with yeah, me. Of course. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and it was really the, because they believed so much in the vision of this film, this little tiny dream of ours, um, and were bringing so much of themselves and showing up, and you know, many uh, of our actors are also first time actors, not just you know, in a film, period. Actors have never acted before this. Um, Alexis Marie Wint, who played Tanita, my best friend, um, it was her first time acting. Um, but, you know, these, these wonderful performers coming and giving themselves over um, to, it's different because it wasn't just a lead, but it was also my baby. You know, I co-wrote this thing with Rashad. Uh, I felt an extreme sense of uh, responsibility uh, to make sure I showed up just as much as they were showing up for me. And, you know, yes, every day there were a million things on my mind because I'm thinking about the story and I'm thinking about the script and I'm thinking about what the producers are saying and I'm thinking about, ooh, that actor dropped out and ooh, we don't got that location. No, there's no permit. Ooh, Lord. I'm thinking about all of that. <laughs> um, but also, you know, having a performance background and, you know, being an actor, knowing that you need your scene partner to be there for you and to hold you, and especially what you know we, we wrote for Ayana. I really needed them, uh, and I know that they really needed me. So I think, and that's you know to lead on in any sense of the word is to to show up for the people who are part of your team. And I felt that very strongly as the lead on this, um, and I know Ra felt that very strongly as the director on this piece. Yeah, when you're when you had this movie premiere at Sundance, like what actually back up a little. When you're making the film and you're editing the film, like, did you ever think to yourself, boy, this is what I hope people take away from this movie? Do you ever think like that as, a, as an actor, as a, as a filmmaker? Like, this is what I really hope people take away? Or, or are you just trying to tell a story and people take whatever they're going to take? Oh, I def definitely have a hope, you know. Um, and my hope for this one was that love is worth it, you know. Regardless of you know how you know if it, even if it doesn't work out, if you could leave the film feeling that both of them grew from the experience, um, is then I then I've succeeded as a storyteller. How about for you? Absolutely. I mean, we had so many conversations before we even put uh, pen to pad. Uh, and I think a big one was that we wanted it was very important to us that Black people felt seen watching this film, you know, yes, it's a love story, it's a black love story, you know, and it's a, was a black neighborhood, Harlem, you know, and these are <laughs> black families, this is a black community. Why is it still is? I'm still there, but you know, I'm on the edge. Um, and that was, you know, so that, the blackness of it was important in that there have been black people that have seen the film, all people, of course, but that, especially young black women, black women to, to say, I felt seen. I felt seen in a way that I haven't in a in a long time, or I haven't at all. That is like, whoa! What a gift to get that kind of feedback because that's what I'm always looking for as a creator and a consumer. I'm like, please, somebody see me, somebody see me, um, and that we were able to just do a little bit to contribute. You know, um, yeah, it's the greatest gift. What kind of feedback did you? get, especially from a year ago when it did premiere at Sundance. And what was that, what was that premiere like for you to, like, to give it out into the world, especially at a festival like Sundance? Um, well, it was my second time there, so I guess I was in a different headspace um, than perhaps folks that had been there for the first time. I didn't necessarily had like delusions of grandeur this time. You know, I, I realized that, you know, we made a small film with no stars, um, no current stars. Um, but, um, you know, to the, the, the fact, when we got, when we initially got in that room, Zora, Zora and I, we said, I, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, write, we're gonna write a draft of a project that, I, that, that, that I'll direct you'll star in, and that will premiere at Sundance in 2018, or worse, comes to worse, 2019, in the next competition at Sundance, because it's a, this, the, the low budget, budget blah, blah, level. blah. Mm -hmm. I knew that whatever we put down on paper, that we'd be able to, to turn around 
that would, you know what I mean, that would fit. So the fact that all of that came true, everything else after that was icing on the cake. Okay. So that, the, the fact that we were there, that was the end of the story. The, but, you know, the, the response has been great. You know, the, the, you know, the Spirit Awards and, and the, the release at IFC, all of this is just like, it's just, just on top of it. The, but the, the, the fact that we got it out into the world and that it was, you know, in front of an audience was all we wanted, you know, all we aimed for, you know, and everything else has been, has been a wonderful ride. Oh, Congrats on the ride. <laughs> <laughs> So here, here at the foundation, uh, we get questions written oh, down dear. by people in the audience. Oh, dear. So, uh, uh, Seyfried? Seyfried, are you here? No, Siegfried. Siegfried. Oh, Siegfried. Great. Thank you. Hi, Siegfried. Hi. Front row. Yeah. So, Siegfried's question is for Rashad. Uh, how did you uh, break into directing TV episodes having done short films? Uh, so, from the short films, I then made a feature film called Gun Ho Road uh, as my thesis film at NYU that premiered at Sundance 2011. Got an agent as a result of that. That agent uh, was at Paradigm at the, at the time uh, and they were very big in television. And I applied to a couple of directing programs uh, that they have at uh, each uh, uh, network. So ABC has one, uh, NBC, uh, CBS, I think, had one, Sony Pictures, Warner Brothers. All of them have uh, like directing initiatives and also writing initiatives as well. I applied to NBC. A man by the name of Noberta Barba uh, gave me my first shot uh, on a show called Grimm, where I got to shadow uh, a couple of ep a few, a few episodes, and he gave me my first shot to, to direct an episode. Um, and then I applied to the Warner Brothers program. They saw that I had directed an episode of television. They were like, great, you know? And so then I shadowed on Supernatural and then got an episode of Supernatural and then came back and got another episode. And then after that, you know, after you had a couple episodes, and then it just, it just uh, snowballed into five or six years of television. Yeah. So this next question is, what role did improv play in this movie? We get that question a lot. Right, right, because it feels like, it feels, it feels very authentic yep. New York. <laughs> um, the truth of the matter is that I, I, I would say 95% or more was scripted. Uh, improv played a little bit because we had actors who were raw and, mm. and were, were able to, but it was sort of within scenes that they could add a little word or you know a little a little aside or at the end of a scene or something like that but it wasn't the whole scene mm -hmm. at all you know the the scene was scripted and if they had like okay you guys are like looking at the guys playing basketball there's like just a like a little bit you can add before we get into the dialogue great so they'll be like oh he's cute you know what i mean just like little stuff like that so so it has that feel but zora and i are native new yorkers and i've lived in harlem for the last 20 years and zora's lived there all of her life so we had an ear for the for how people speak in the neighborhood and had very just a lot of fun writing that dialogue mm -hmm for Harlemites, you know, like I, I heard those girls on the subway three, four years before we shot that scene, like that conversation, which is like wild and like, whoa, I heard that, you know, I heard them talking about it, I was like, whoa, just write that down right quick. Um, <laughs> that being said though, we, we did have, again, going back to the casting gods, we did have a cast, all of my girlfriends are also native New Yorkers. Uh, that, that played Ayana's girlfriends. And Michelle, you know, has been in New York for a very long time as well. And Joshua happens to be a Southerner. So there was something about the actors way into what we had written because they knew it so, you know, they, they knew it themselves. So it, 
we didn't sometimes you know there's a lot of movies set in new york and as a new yorker you like that is not mm -mm, we do not talk like that uh but they you know they just fit in their mouths and they just yeah, knew very it. much yeah yeah they were able to make it feel very very organic because mm -hmm. they the tonality all of it you know they get they can speak they can speak like that you but know whether it wasn't acting that that imp when, when people ask you uh, you know feels like you did a lot of improv it's a compliment because if everything does feel so organic and natural mm -hmm. and so uh, congratulations and thank bravo you. Thank you, and thank you. thank you so much for being here thank you. Sag after Foundation thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.